Clay Patton on the Rural Radio Network here with a check of your weekly commodity roundup. We do that with Daryl Holiday, Country Futures in Frankfort, Kansas. Daryl, I kind of take this week's trade really kind of down to Thursday, Friday. That really seemed to be some whiplash days. Thursday grains are sharply lower on looks that maybe we're uh, curbing uh, inflation. Then we get maybe some COVID news out of China, and boom, right back it comes rallying on Friday. So what do you make of the week's trade, and where could we possibly be going as we look to next week? <laughs> well, yeah, you've summed it up pretty well. I mean, you can throw in there on Wednesday we had a NAS. Uh, the, the, the WASD and the NAS numbers that came out, and generally there wasn't anything very supportive there, although they could it could have been worse. Uh, but uh, generally, you know, it, right, we basically we, we were under pressure Thursday, kind of put the lows. Matter of fact, if you stand back and look at the grain market as a whole, the, bar, the market that glares at you with the weakness is the corn market that really struggled, as a matter of fact, down 20-plus cents on the week, even with some strength on Friday, as you mentioned. But once again, a lot of factors that are involved – uh, we did get the after some early pressure. We did get the NAS numbers out on the, the crop production numbers. And they raised the corn yield up four tenths of a bushel. Basically, the also the beans also up four tenths of a bushel. So increased supply. Both the, the ending stocks all projected all went up. But it could have been worse. What I mean by that is uh, the WASDE side of things. They did not do much with the with the corn or really any of the demand side of things at all. And how they kept from lowering the corn export number for the year I, I really don't know with this right now our total u.s export commitments that would be shipped out and sales are down 54 percent compared to a year ago i don't think i know i've never seen that uh, in the first week of november during a crop year so that numbers it, it, we're in trouble there i think as a whole now once again the market's doing that on purpose it's there's so much demand domestic demand here in the middle part of the country with ethanol and the, out in the plains that the basis is just pulling that that corn away from the export market, and to make it even worse, you got a river that is way, way too low, and freight, freight costs are, in some cases, we can't ship any corn, so we've lost that advantage, and therefore our prices are well above, uh, you know, the, the the prices out of South America. So those things have been well documented. But as you mentioned, we got under that pressure, and and then there's, you know, one of the things that has been pressuring the markets to some extent. I, I want to stress that I really question how much it's been. It has been some factor because lack of Chinese growth, economic growth, and demand is always a factor for us. We we depend on, but we certainly depend on the soybeans and the, these COVID lockdowns that they've been uh, that have been on in major cities. That, I mean, they literally lock everybody at home pretty well. There's been rumor in the last couple of weeks that they might start to loosen the, the lockdown policy. Well, they have – Thursday it was announced, or Thursday night overnight it was announced that there has been some loosening of those, some of those restrictions. They're still having lockdowns. It's just not quite as expansive, I guess, is the best way to, to, to say that. And also people coming into China with, you know, their, their quarantines are less – fewer days, those types of things, and they're certainly supportive, but I'm not sure it's going to change things dramatically. They did, China did enter the U.S. export market on Friday, uh, indicating they bought some, we bought some beans from China, from the U.S. and from Argentina, so there was some indications of some th- there, but I don't want to get, I'm not sure it's real, really tied to the lockdown news. Uh, crop conditions uh, and the weather are very good in Brazil and got better this week in Argentina. Uh, rain we had the dry time, a period that went for about seven or eight days in Brazil. They, that really helped them catch up on the on the planning and really stay on very good progress. And, they, and then rains returned and would rain in Argentina this week and look forward to more next week. Certainly try to take care of some of the dry conditions. They've been fighting really for the last year, really for the last two or three years, but they've been dry and, and they need, they'll need that as they move into the December, January, February time period. On the on the week, uh, December corn six fifty eight down twenty three on the week. March corn down twenty four at six sixty three. January soybeans down eleven at fourteen fifty. March soybeans fourteen fifty four down fifteen on the week. December Kansas City wheat ten lower at nine forty three. The new crop July down twelve at nine twenty eight. The energy sector quite interesting with a big jump on Friday. Despite that strength on Friday, uh, up about three two to three dollars. That's interesting to note that when in fact. That still ended up with we still ended up with December crude oil down 365 on the week at 88.96 gives an indication of how we saw a lot of pressure early in the week that did it was an influence on lowering the soybean values and the corn values also 
uh, to get a very volatile market back and forth. I should mention also on the grain side, we're going to see negotiations go on this week in Geneva regarding extending the Ukraine corridor beyond November 19th. Most anticipation is that that will happen. If something breaks down there, that would obviously offer, that will cause from some fireworks on Sunday night to some extent. On the livestock side, generally steady to weak cattle futures. The, we did the, the, we did see higher hog futures on the week. Cash-fed cattle steady for the third straight week in a row, generally in the southern plains, 150, 153 in the north. That generally caught most of it. Uh, futures tried to rally sharply on the back of the equity markets late in the week, uh, but gave up a lot of gains. Of course, the rally in the equity market late in the week was off the fact that the CPI on Thursday morning came, for the U.S. came in. It's up 7.7% year over year. That was seen as somewhat of a victory. It's hard to believe you'd consider that much of a victory, but markets are fickle. Markets work off of psychology. Market works off the idea of what's changing. This That spurred some ideas that maybe the Fed wouldn't have to be quite so aggressive with their Fed discount rate. I think those are false hopes as we go into December anyway. Maybe something changes at first of the year. And then the overall economic growth still a concern, the beef and pork complex as a whole. Hot futures were higher after the, you know we saw a real strong surge of three to four dollars at midweek, but they gave up a lot of ground by week's end, but did end up higher on the week. Feed it the cattle as a whole again, somewhat mixed on the generally uh, uh, mixed to lower on the feeder cattle and the live cattle, but some volatility back and forth. But a continued weakness because of the inability of the cash market to overall to rally, and the idea is that probably the seasonal big move in the choice beef that seasonal move is. We're within a couple of weeks of that probably coming to an end. We'll see how that reacts as we go on into the holidays. These cattle, 150, 152, down 13 on the week. The February cattle down 112 at 153 and a quarter. November feeders down 87, 176.95. And the Jan feeders close at 178.57, down 110 on the week. December hogs, 84.35, up $1.38 for the week. February hogs up 198 on the week, closing at 88.40. And that is Daryl Holiday, Country Futures, Frankfurt, Kansas. Always learn more at their website, countryfutures.com. Do remember, though, trained futures and options involve risk of loss may not be suitable for all investors. Consider these risks before investing.